Attila with Chaos. <laughs> oh goody! It's another Attila record. It's another record that's gonna showcase this blend of metal and hip-hop and deathcore, a little bit of metalcore, some of that alternative rock from the turn of the millennium that we all just absolutely loved. New metal, uh, oh man. We've done a couple of these reviews before, they've never ended well, but there's one thing that I think has never truly been done, we're gonna actually give it a shot, and that's review this album legitimately. Most of the time, whenever I talk about these guys, it's I'm not their biggest fan, there's some sort of gimmick involved, so we're not gonna do that this time. Instead, it's just gonna be straight up, let's talk about what this album does. This is an 11-track affair from these guys that are sort of like a... A party, feel-good bro band that just loves to talk about getting pits started and having cheap beer and a bong in your backpack, almost like it's what every college kid needs. This is the soundtrack to a frat party by a bunch of people that you would not want your daughters around, but your daughters want to be around them, and really the question then is why. Well, we start off with tracks such as Ignite, Bulletproof and Public Apology, and you start to learn a couple things that Attila is really known for. First of all, they're known for song titles that are at times kind of vague and kind of tough. You know, a little bit of that chest beating, a little bit of that We Love Harambe going on. And the, the lyricism is, well, it's basically like Limp Biscuit decided to grow up a little bit. They're not just talking about wanting it all for the nookie. They sort of adopted this sort of tough guy attitude that Limp had. But this is one where that softer side that you heard from Fred Durst every so often where he liked to complain about things is relatively absent and instead replaced by a steady dose of two middle fingers, almost as though it was prescribed by some sort of deranged douche doctor. But at any rate, the lyricism is not really the main accreditation here. Instead, the vocalization is really where the kind of action is. This is where things are a little bit diverse for this group. That's why so many genre tags were really laced whenever describing them. Because Franz has the opportunity and the ability to both uh, growl. He also is a hip-hop star, I guess, or he's at least released an album. So he does have a little bit of that old street cred going on. So he likes to do some hippin' and some hoppin' because he don't like to be stoppin'. And then you are able to descend to your deathcore breakdowns as well. His cleaner voice is actually more of a shrill, uh, I guess, scream type, or at least one that really is on par with the turn of the Millennium 2000s new metal scene, or maybe even the later end. Something where you, s you hear a lot of the strain in that clean voice as he's kind of shouting these lyrics at you. It's one that definitely fits that sort of 2000s uh, new metal alternative mold. It's almost like if he would just stick with this voice on the entirety of Attila Records, they would almost be contemporaries. Uh, but it's one that is also there to provide a nice little break. It does give the choruses something to sort of look forward to because most of the lyricism is also sort of an incorrigible mess at times. Then you have a track such as Mosh Pit, which is all talking about getting a mosh pit together because you need to have a song in this style of music that basically tells people what to do. They tell you, let's get a fucking mosh pit started. And then we have rapping that basically sees Franz doing his best impersonation of Eminem from Rap God. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm typically one with these guys to just sit here and talk shit. I'm one of those guys that they talk about in these songs, although not being addressed, you know, individually. But the dude does have pace. He does have flow. His lyrics are a little bit meh, but he does have a little bit of talent. And he does have skill in this department. So it almost makes me wonder what his hip-hop album even sounds like. This is also a track that for most of it doesn't sound very much like Metal Song. Really, it's one that has sort of that, you know, eerie effect or that more metallic, you know, minor chord heavy significance, that deeply down-tuned significance to really fit it within the deathcore marketplace, but it also has a lot of the elements that you would see in either hip-hop or even pop music that gives it sort of that club effect, and based around that, those two combined actually make for a relatively interesting composition, albeit it's not one that's extremely dynamic. So I do have to praise Moshpit just a little bit. 
But I keep on returning to the lyricism with this band. I keep on returning to just how juvenile some of this stuff does sound. Now, I understand that some bands like to cater towards certain crowds or cater to certain types of personalities, but these guys are also not within their second or third album anymore. This is probably album number seven. They've been going at this for about ten years, and it feels like they've just sort of adopted this persona and they must maintain it and continue it. But it also philosophically makes you wonder if a lot of the rap lyricism that we're hearing from artists that have been around for 10 to 15 years, they've not grown up. Why should these guys have to grow up? And really, that would be a point that I would not be able to contend or counteract because, well, it's pretty damn true. Listening to this album, though, does become quite a bit of a chore. And it's not because of the stylistic makeup not having variety. It certainly does, considering they do have a lot of different little instances where their sounds blend together. It's just that sometimes you have to be really the right kind of person to enjoy this style of music. And it's just as simple as that. Is this going to be a gateway for a lot of fans to get into heavy metal? I really don't think so, unless they're you know only going to stop within bands of this variety and then insult those who like others. We've seen a little bit of that. Ugh. But this is also a group that I think is going to be played at parties where there's metal kids there, or it's being thrown by metal kids. It's going to be seen as, you know, the metal kid type thing uh, for this generation. And, hey, to each their own, I suppose. It's not my fault that douchebags are getting this reputation for being douchebags, and then they happen to listen to Attila, and then Attila kind of gets the reputation of being douchebags because douchebags are listening to them. It's not my fault. It really isn't. A lot of people that like this band aren't douchebags, so let's just get that out of the way. The album, it's a real trial. It's definitely something that you have to be sort of in the mode or really respect the band to really enjoy it. And as somebody that's never really gotten into this group all of that much, I think that a lot of those, you know, nice little quirks that you guys like to talk about or they're just having fun, they're just a party band, I think it's all kind of lost on me a little bit. Not because I'm not cool, not because I don't like to do the things that you like to do. Hey man, I was 22 once. I once thought it was me versus the world. <laughs> it's just something that for me, within this style of music, is not really what I want. You know, if I want to listen to songs about partying and being hard and middle fingers up and blah blah blah, I'll listen to pop or I'll listen to rap, I'll listen to something that has that macho machismo sort of ingrained within it as opposed to it being yelled during, you know, a generic breakdown. That's just me. I really feel kind of wrong giving this a score considering I myself am partially biased, but, you know, just for the, you know, instance of having Mosh Pit in this review, I will give it a score. And I'll give it a score that will actually make Attila fans really, really happy. No, it won't, but it should. It's a 69 out of 100. Hopefully a lot of you will listen to this and find heavy metal girlfriends, finally, that listen to this, and you finally get laid, you actually have the opportunity to do a little 69 It's pretty good stuff. What did you think about Chaos by Attila? Let me know in the comments below, and let me know how big of a douche I am, because it really doesn't bother me, and it shouldn't bother you. I'm Cover Killer Nation, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see a legendary review of an Attila album, scope out the link to your left. If you want to know about other 2016 album reviews and how I felt about them, scope out your link to your right. You can also subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon. My name is Cover Killer Nation, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.